Hey everyone, Rob from Southgate Media Group here. Before we get started with this podcast, we have a quick message. If this is your first time checking out the show, we love that you found us and we really hope you enjoy it. What we have to say is for the subscribers. If you enjoy our shows, would you please donate to help keep these going? We don't want to have to put traditional ads on these shows, but this does cost money. So we really do rely heavily on donations. To make a donation to the show, please go to our website, www.southgatemediagroup.com. Go to the page for the show, and in the upper right-hand corner is a donate button. It takes you right to PayPal, and you can donate whatever amount you want. Thanks a lot for listening, everybody. And now, on with the show. Ladies and gentlemen, hello and welcome to the first ever installment of You Got Got, or You Got G-O-T, Sophia's Game of Thrones podcast, a Southgate Media Group production. As you've probably figured out by now, I'm Sophia, your humble host, and this is the podcast in all of its glory. Now, I'm guessing you're wondering, wait a minute, season five premieres on Sunday. What is this insane lady thinking? Well, honestly, that's an astute observation. However, since I'm rather new to the podcast realm myself, I figured the best way for you as listeners to get to know me as your host is to do an introductory episode before the Game of Thrones season starts. That way, after the season premiere, you'll already know who you're listening to. All of that being said, I figure you guys would want to get to know me, the host of yet another Game of Thrones podcast, a little better. So here's a brief overview of who I am. My name, as I mentioned before, is Sophia Porter, and I am a TV nut, totally and completely. I enjoy watching shows like Game of Thrones, Supernatural, Firefly, Battlestar Galactica, anything sci-fi slash fantasy related, I've probably seen it. This isn't to say that I don't enjoy realistic shows, however. Shameless and Parks and Recreation, they're also in my wheelhouse. Now, you might have heard me on the Winchester Report or the Pilot Roundtable, but this is my first time venturing out into the great unknown of solo hosting. I'm also a social media strategist and staff writer for the wonderfully revamped TVBinges.com, where we get folks together on Twitter to live-tweet amazing TV shows. On the side, I try to write scripts, but we all really know how that goes. I'm also a Pisces, but given the fact that astrology doesn't really matter, I'm not quite sure why I mentioned it, aside from the fact that twin fish are awesome. But that's enough about the boring stuff. It's time to dive into the realness of this podcast, the meat, if you will. Game of Thrones, to me, is one of the best, most beautifully executed shows on TV right now, and I am so freaking excited to talk about it every single week. That being said, it's time to get to know me via the series, because this is an intro episode after all. I've read the books, I've seen all of the episodes of the show, so really, I can promise you, you're in good hands. It's guaranteed. Recently, my boss, Kyle Tremblay, and I narrowed down our favorite characters in both series, A Song of Ice and Fire and Game of Thrones, and at the top of both my lists was one single character. One man who has the courage to stand up for what is right, even if he doesn't have all the fingers. That's right. My top character is none other than Davos Seaworth. Now, I'm sure many of you have your eyebrows raised at this point. Davos Seaworth? Who is Davos Seaworth? Well, let me tell you. He is truly one of the more perfect characters George R. R. Martin has created. And yes, of course, I'm biased. You may recognize him as Stannis Baratheon's right-hand man, the gentleman with a salt and peppery beard of wonder, the Onion Knight, the wonderful father and husband who survived Blackwater and is played by Liam Cunningham. Have you got an image of him yet? Well, he's the tops. The best. The only man to have won over my heart completely. With that said, I can't say that my house is the one of Seaworth, even if we were to get married. While I may seem like a northerner because House Stark is truly a wonder to behold, the main reason I love them so much is because of Catelyn Stark, nay, Tully. That's right, ladies and gents, my number one house, the one I would belong to, is House Tully of the Riverlands. Motto, family, duty, honor. Family first, right? Most important thing. Plus, Brendan Tully is one of the best characters to come out of a song of ice and fire, and even though he hasn't been in the show as much in the books when he runs Jamie Lannister in circles, well, it's gold, and you should definitely read them just for that. Well, okay, that's not true. Read the books. Just do it. You'll be so glad you did. And now I'll end that shameless plug. And now it's time for the major question, the one that can break friendships and, of course, start wars. 
who do I think deserves to be on the Iron Throne? And that answer, my friends, my listeners, is not a difficult one for me to come to, given the fact that all of the rest of my favorites are now either dead or out of commission. Rob Stark, the King of the North, a.k.a. the King of My Heart, and or Tyrion Lannister, who, for all we know, isn't in Westeros. So now I've hearkened on to the belief that Stannis Baratheon should rule Westeros. Before you tune out, hear me out. While he's not necessarily a good man, he would be a great king. The guy is known for doing the just thing. I mean, look no further than his treatment of my one and only Davos Seaworth for proof. You see, Davos was a smuggler. He got caught, and instead of putting him to death, Stannis was like, it's cool, guys. I actually need this guy around. So he lets Davos keep his life. But, because he needed to be punished for breaking the law, Stannis chops off some of his fingers. A small sacrifice, but one that makes sense given the fact that smuggling is frowned upon. So, yeah, I believe Stannis would be a great king, as long as Melisandre takes her claws out of his neck. Plus, he's the rightful heir to the Iron Throne. Sure, if Gendry Baratheon gets pardoned, we'll have a problem, but given the fact that he hasn't been in the show for some time, Stannis the Manus doesn't have to worry. And his sigil is freaking awesome, even if it is Lord of Light related. So, those are just some tidbits of information about me in terms of Game of Thrones. Hopefully I haven't completely scared you off because it's time now to talk about the actual podcast itself. Here's the lowdown. This podcast is primarily a TV show spoiler house, but given the fact that I've read the books and love them greatly, I'll be dropping knowledge bombs about A Song of Ice and Fire as well. If you're not, I'll alert you to when it's happening so you can turn the volume down. Each episode of the podcast itself will start off with a brief overview of what we just witnessed on TV. What happened to each of the primary characters? What's going on with John? How's Tyrion holding up? What about Daenerys? And where's Jamie? Then we'll go over what I enjoyed and what I didn't enjoy. And if you're not, it won't always be me talking. Of course, I will have wonderful guests who love the show and series just as much as I do. It'll be great. I can guarantee it. Next up on the list is something new, but hopefully just as enjoyable. I will be recording myself during each episode of Game of Thrones and will pick the reaction highlights. I can't promise there won't be swearing, but I can tell you it will be entertaining. And if you all feel so inclined, you can do the same, and when my next episode comes to light, I'll feature the best reactions. Then I'm going to dive into the crazy fan theories and talk about them. I'll go to Reddit and I will go in the deep recesses of the internet to figure out what fans really think is going on in the Game of Thrones world. Next up will be a segment called Davos Talk, in which I talk about whether or not Davos, my favorite character, was in the episode. If he was, did I enjoy his storyline? If he wasn't, would the episode have been better had he been in it? I know this might be boring for some of you guys, but for me, it's going to be a way to sort of work out my feelings towards this character and figure out why I like him so much. And hopefully I'll be able to tilt you guys in favor of him as well. I know after much harping, I finally got Kyle to agree that he is wonderful. So maybe it'll work on you guys too. Fingers crossed. The final segment of the podcast will be a Song of Ice and Fire versus Game of Thrones showdown, in which I work out my feelings toward the departure from the book series, as the showrunners announced that, come season five, things are going to be changing. At the end of season four, I was sorely affected by deaths that weren't supposed to happen, or that I didn't perceive to happen. Remember Gren and Pip from The Wall? Remember Jojen Reed? Well, they're still alive in the books, and I'm still very scandalized by their gruesome departures. This will be the most A Song of Ice and Fire spoilery, so if you're planning on reading the books, this is your heads up. Season 5 is bringing changes, and I can guarantee some I will be up in arms about. So, that's the lowdown on You Got Got. I'm really looking forward to this whole shebang, and hopefully you guys are too. If you have any questions, don't hesitate to email yougotgotpodcast at gmail.com. Follow the podcast at you got got Pod on Twitter, and if you feel so inclined, you can follow me at Sophia M. Porter as well. Farewell until Sunday, everyone, and never forget, the night is dark and full of terrors.